afternoon students today we are discussing about tax provisions for mergers and acquisition that is come under the unit number 4 of the syllabus so how we can uh, you can say what are the tax provisions which are applicable to the mergers and acquisition and what are the tax concessions we are avail in a mergers and acquisitions so first we will move with the introduction part the income tax act 1961 does not regulate the procedural aspect of merger and acquisition but it provide a tax concessions or benefits in respect of amalgamation or merger of companies as per the fact as per the act certain benefits or concessions are available to both amalgamating and amalgamated companies only when they fulfill the all the conditions as mentioned in various sections of the act further if the amalgamated company wishes to set off the losses and unabsorbed depreciation of the amalgamating company with its profit then the condition mentioned in section 72a of income tax act should be compiled with so there are basically tax implications there are basically three type of benefits uh, or we can say both the companies how we can take the benefit of tax so first if we can move with uh, that is tax concession to amalgamating company number 2 is tax concession to shareholder of amalgamating company and the third one is tax concession to amalgamated companies so first we will move with that is tax concession to amalgamating company or transferer company so uh, here capital gains are not attracted means uh, there is no uh, benefit in the capital gains means uh, that should not be attracted by amalgamating or amalgamated companies so here uh, basically the according to section 47 sub section 6 of the income tax act where there is a transfer of any capital asset by amalgamating company to amalgamated company such transfer will not be regarded as transfer for the purpose of capital gain provided and there is no benefit of capital gain and the second one is a tax concession to the foreign amalgamating company here uh, as per the section 47 subsection 6a of the income tax act 1961 where the company holds any share of indian company and transfer the shares in the scheme of amalgamation to another foreign company such transaction will not be regarded as transfer for the purpose of capital gain under section 45 of income tax act there are two conditions to be satisfied number one is at least 25% 25% of the shareholders of amalgamating foreign company should be continue remain shareholders of amalgamated foreign company such transfer does not attract tax on capital gain in the country in which the amalgamating company is incorporated tax concession to the shareholders of amalgamating company or transferer company or we can say the seller company basically here we will apply the uh, there are basically here we are applying of section 47 sub section 7 of the income tax act uh, 1961 uh, what it says where a shareholder of the amalgam amalgamating company transfer his share in a scheme of amalgamation such transaction will not be regarded as transfer of capital gain purpose here we have to again following conditions to be satisfied under this the transfer of share is made in consideration of allotment to him of any share or shares in amalgamated company the amalgamated company is an indian company so these two conditions must be satisfied for getting a tax concession the third one is a tax con concession to amalgamated companies 
here uh, a company is eligible to get tax concession only if the following conditions are satisfied the amalgamation satisfy all the three conditions laid in laid down in section 2 ib subsection ib the amalgamated company is an indian company if ab above conditions are satisfied then amalgamated company shall get a benefit of tax concessions or they may eligible so what are the three conditions under section 2 subsection ib all the property of amalgamating company or companies immediately before amalgamation become the property of amalgamated company by virtue of amalgamation same like that uh, liabilities must become liabilities of amalgamated company by virtue of amalgamation and the shareholders holding not less than three-fourth in the value of shares in amalgamating company or companies immediately become the shareholders of amalgamated company by virtue of amalgamation so that three conditions must be satisfied if that three conditions are satisfied along with the company is in uh, is a indian company then they may eligible for the these uh, tax concessions so number one is expenditure on scientific research under section 35 subsection 5 so here basically the company where the company uh, is amalgamated company is basically eligible for unabsorbed capital expenditure on scientific research of amalgamating company with will be allowed to carry forward and set off in hands of amalgamated company and the second one is if the if such ceases to used in a previous year of the scientific research related to the business of amalgamated company and is sold by amalgamated company without having used for other purpose the sale price to the extent of the cost of the asset shall be treated as business income of the amalgamated company the second one is expenditure on acquisition of patent rights or copyrights uh, as uh, that is a question in the uh, mst what are the in, uh, what are intangible assets include basically these are the intangible assets patents copyrights which cannot be seen or touch uh, goodwill so we can how we can treat under a benefit of tax concession of intangibles when the patent or copyrights acquired by the amalgamating company is transferred to any amalgamated indian company the provision of a section 35a which were applicable to amalgamating company shall become applicable in same manner to amalgamated company so here they will take a benefit of provision for depreciation or unabsorbed expenses then expenditure on know-how under section 35 ab subsection 3 where there is a transfer of undertaking under a scheme of amalgamation amalgamated company shall be entitled to claim deduction as such expenditure is eligible for depreciation as intangible assets in case of provision of depreciation shall apply then expenditure for operating license to operate telecommunication under section 35 a double b subsection 6 here the expenditure on acquisition of license not yet written off shall be available for amalgamated company in such number of balance installments where such license is sold by amalgamated company the treatment of deficiency or surplus will be same as would have been in case of amalgamated company next is treatment of preliminary expenses under section 35 d subsection 5 where an amalgamating company merge into scheme of amalgamation with the amalgamated company amount of preliminary expenses of amalgamating company 
which are not yet written off shall be allowed as deduction to amalgamated company. Then amortization of expenditure in case of amalgamation under section 35D. So uh, where an assessee becoming an Indian company incurs any expenditure wholly or exclusively for the purpose of amalgamation or demerger of undertaking the assessee shall be allowed a deduction of amount equal to one fifth of such expenditure for such for each and of five successive five years sorry five successive previous years beginning with the previous year is which in which the amalgamation or demerger take place the next one is treatment of expenditure on prospecting of certain minerals under section 35 e subsection 7 e so here where an amalgamation amalgamating company merge in a scheme of amalgamation with the amalgamated company the amount of expenditure on prospecting of minerals of amalgamating company which are not yet written off shall be allowed as all deductions to the amalgamated company next is treatment of bad debts under section 35 subsection i clause 7 where due to amalgamation the bad debt or the debt of amalgamating company have have been taken over by amalgamated company and subsequently such debt or part of debt become bad such bad debt will be allowed as a deduction to amalgamated company the last but not the least carry forward and set off of business losses and unabsorbed depreciation of amalgamation amalgamating company here uh, all the business losses and unabsorbed depreciation uh, should be allowed to the amalgamated company under the scheme of amalgamation for as a deduction so they can get a deduction of all these points nine points if they have qualified the these conditions these conditions are uh, under section 2 subsection ib and the second one is indian company under section 2 there are three conditions we must satisfied as a amalgamated company if you have any query you can text me thank you for listening